Civil war has been marked by the frequent surfacing of fake videos and doctored evidence, more often than not at the hands of sections of the very powerful global Sri Lankan Tamil diaspora who supported the terrorist group Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam fighting a war in Sri Lanka. Last week, viewers watched 20 of a reported total of 50 Sri Lankan men showing scars from branding and cigarette butts on their bodies, faces darkened to hide their identities. They claimed they were raped brutally too. The torture, they said, had been inflicted by Sri Lankan security forces in 2016. Sri Lanka is already under fire for alleged human rights violations during the long war and excesses like in any conflict in the world were rare but not unknown. However, why would a country already under international scrutiny torture prisoners even seven years after the end of a war? Lord Naseby, a British Member of Parliament, caused a sensation across the world last week by disclosing classified information on Sri Lanka's controversial civil war. Well, it's very interesting, this report, of course. We are now near the end of 17, and one wonders why it's taken quite so long to come out. Uh, and if there is any uh, torture of that nature, then it's entirely unacceptable. However, I just uh, observed two things. Firstly, that we've recently had an asylum seeker case here in the UK with a Sri Lankan who had similar burns and, uh, uh, and stuff on his back, on his arms. Uh, but the conclusion of the appeal judge was that these have been self-inflicted uh, and they were had he must have had some help to do it but they are far too clearly d defined as burns etc to have been done by anybody who really was roughing somebody up beyond's london correspondent mandy clark asked lord naseby what he thinks of the report of torture filed by the sri lankan men all of whom are seeking political asylum in the united kingdom the case of Sri Lanka was rejected by the UK's Court of Appeal on the grounds that the wounds he showed as proof to gain asylum were self-inflicted by proxy, quote-unquote. Rumours of several unscrupulous doctors in the United Kingdom offering their services won't die down. Mandy Clark asked Lord Naseby what made him fairly confident that the latest report may be a sham. It's, I go to Sri Lanka about once a year. I make a particular point of seeing the ICRC the International Red Cross. I do it in their headquarters. I have nobody there other than the head of the International Red Cross. I have asked them three times now, do you, the International Red Cross, who of course have access and are in all the prisons, Booza, the, probably the highest security prison, through to the other prison, they have access to the uh, immigration area, access to the police station. I've asked them have you come across torture as defined under the Geneva Convention in any form or other uh, in the relevant year when I've been there? And their answer is, no, we have not. We've come across some heavy handling, but I have to say there's heavy handling all over the world. Uh, and I reflect on also the situation um, outside Sri Lanka when you think of Guantanamo Bay. I don't believe there's anything of that nature being done in Sri Lanka. There may be the odd case, but I'd like to see the real evidence from these particular uh, young men. But can doctors really tell whether a wound was violently inflicted by a third party or by oneself by choice? No, says the British politician, citing his own wife who is a doctor. Last week's controversial film too presents no credentials for the doctors who certified the wounds, nor does it explain how they differentiated between self-inflicted wounds and torture. But the British politician says he can understand the motives behind such acts. It is a very great temptation for people desperate to stay in the West uh, to self-inflict. Whether there are other instances, I don't know. But I, I do question it because, you know, the ICRC have nothing, nothing to hide. Uh, and I've been in Boozer prison, myself, physically, not telling them where I was going to go, having got there, and saying, why can't I go into this room or that room or somewhere else, having been tipped off as to where I might go. Uh, and again, there's no evidence of this on the ground. So, I think there may be the odd case, but there's nothing on the scale of what's being talked about in this, pro in this press report. People like to come to the UK. They ha can have a better life here. Um, and maybe they were LTT supported or not. Uh, I'm not really concerned whether they were or weren't, but were I to have been one, then you'd be really tempted to try and stay and to have a few burns on your body 
um, is, is, is a small price to pay if you can get in uh, through that mechanism. Lord Naseby names the reasons for his suspicions about the latest report on the 50 men. First, he wonders at the time lapse. Why did they wait from 2016 to almost the end of 2017 to make these charges? Second, the parliamentarian points out that there has rarely been a clearer and more robust rebuttal by the government of Sri Lanka. For now, Lord Naseby is not going to pursue investigation of the latest charges made by these men. But if proven false, they will add fuel to the huge fire his speech in the House of Lords in defence of Sri Lanka has already ignited both in London and in Colombo's parliament thousands of kilometres away. Padma Rao with Mandy Clark in London for Weon.